okay guys so we are getting started so before we start can you just confirm if uh, my voice is audible can you just please confirm in the chat box if my voice is audible guys Uh, yes, Murli. Um, yeah, you can tell. Uh, Murli, I've just unmuted you. Hello. Yes, Murli, you can speak. Okay, I guess there's some issue with. Hello. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are audible right now. Tell me. Yeah, yeah even you are audible. Okay, okay, all right. So yeah. let's get started then. Uh, yeah. have, you got, have you got any questions? Before we start, no, not yet, not right now. All right, then I'll just mute you. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Good evening, guys. So we'll start off with the first question. Okay, so before we go ahead and start start taking the questions. So we were supposed to, uh, you know, attended to uh, joined by another. Uh, very close friend of us who works very closely with us on different type of cases, especially concerning the pet uh, ownership as well as pet dogs related issues in residential societies and things like that. So today he has, is not being able to join us. So originally what the, the one of the agendas for today's webinar was that, uh, you know, to field 
the questions regarding the newly reformed and newly introduced uh, laws that uh, makes the pet owners you know accountable with fines and punishments and things like that there's a lot of new changes that's been happening on the national front and it's so important for all the pet dog owners to understand what their rights are going to be and how those laws are going to be affecting your um, dogs as well going forward but one thing is for sure please understand that no matter what keep a strong clear record of your dog's vaccinations okay because that is one particular aspect where the the central laws are not going to be going lenient and uh, so we have been informed that he will be joining in the next uh, weekend session that is the next saturday all right and he'll be ready to fill any such questions that you may have with regards to your dog as well as if let's say if you have any um, challenges with regards to your society people and all if you're facing such issues you can simply you know fill those questions during that session all right, so let's move away from that and let's get started with the questions that have been posted. <clears throat> so the first question is from Chaitra Yadav. The question is, how many times should I feed my lab? He is one year, two months old. And what exactly to be fed? Well, Chaitra, first things first, uh one predominant factor that you must keep in mind is uh what exactly is your dog's lifestyle like if he, if he's a dog who is who goes on a lot of uh, exercise and jogging and everything and playing outdoors a lot so in those cases you can stick to three times a meal but then again more than three times or two times a meal is the most important question to pose is how much food should be fed to such type of dogs and most importantly, what should be the you no know, critical components of those food? So typically, if it's a, a lab and is a one year old, two months roughly, so which means he is a growing dog, and which also means that he needs quite a bit of uh, animal protein, chicken, or pork, or rabbit, or anything that you can feed. Specifically, the you know the animal protein, and it must constitute at least forty to fifty percent of the diet the rest can be filled up with uh, dietary fiber and uh, vegetables and fruits if you want that's again optional but primarily try to keep it as much as possible 40 to 50 percent of the meal and now you might ask he okay so which means that you know if we are feeding uh, if you have to feed uh, red meat then what should be the portion then of course if if it's a red meat and again considering the fact that right now it's a uh, winters so you can feed anywhere between 350 to 400 grams of red meat not at a go but throughout the day okay but again make sure that you are uh, giving him a lot of hydration you're keeping him well hydrated in any case because uh, red meat does uh, dehydrate a dog and they tend to drink a lot of water as a result of that and if you're feeding lean chicken like lean meat like chicken or um, let's say quail or pigeon or things like that so in those cases uh, again you can feed anywhere between 400 to 450 grams roughly for an adult labrador but again if you are going to feed in like like fish then again you can easily feed anywhere between 400 to 500 grams like that because fish is pretty lean and it's easier on the stomach and it also helps uh, with dogs if they are you know struggling with kidney related issues or the breeds that are more prone to kidney related issues so again make sure that you are feeding your dog a good amount of veggies not more than 25 to 30 percent not more than that so if if it is already consisting more than 50 percent it's time to cut down on that and try to make sure that you you know whenever you are giving your dog non-veg uh, try to include uh, coriander and um you know watermelons and papaya in the diet and pumpkin because uh, coriander basically flushes out the toxins from the body and it's a very critical component and uh, it also helps in flushing out toxins from the kidney so it helps to wash it all down
Okay, so next question is from Deepika Padmanabhan. Kindly help me with what to do when my puppy has blood drops. What should I do? It's a female dog. Okay, so I'm assuming that uh, Deepika, you have mentioned, I, I'm assuming that you are inquiring about what to do when your female puppy is undergoing heat cycle. Uh, first thing first, try to keep the living area clean. Okay, and uh, if possible, get a uh, pads that are available in the pet shop and you can literally like sort of nap, huggy snappy pads type so you can buy it from the pet shop and put it on your female dog and that way it would make sure that uh, she is not uh, literally st staining the blood across the house because trust me it's less about the or stereotypical connotation with blood but more to do with the hygiene factor because these bloods are extremely pungent by smell and uh, this is not very good and this smell lasts for a long long time so try to avoid any contact with fabrics especially if there are blood drops on the floor and things like that can be cleaned easily the stench won't last longer but then again, if it is if the dog is uh, sitting or sleeping on fabric like carpet or bed sheets or bed, the smell is not going to go away anytime soon. So try to make it clean first. And also from other perspective, you will see that female dogs do like to have a little bit of ice cream. They love a little bit of ice cream during their heat period. And most importantly, try to feed the feed your dog a food a little bit of food rich in iron okay because it may it so happens that so many times the female dogs stop eating for one or two days during the first cycle okay during the first week and the starting of the first week itself so that is something that you might want to take, consider and uh, you'll also see that your dog your female puppy will show increased um, you know uh, clinginess towards you or a particular member of the family it's and it's very normal there's nothing abnormal about it okay and uh, sometimes some dogs not show any you no know, any effect in their appetite due to the heat cycle but most female dogs do and you don't have to get concerned uh, it's, it's very normal and uh, if, if you need any further help try to get to consult your vet <clears throat> so the next question is from Devjani Bhomik. Three to six months old puppy perfect diet. So Devjani, first of all, it would depend the, on what the puppy was fed while the puppy was with um, the breeder. Okay, so it would be like very good suggestion to get in touch with your breeder what they used to feed and what kind of food are the pup have the puppy been exposed to. So ideally, you would want to, uh, you know, give your puppy exposure to every different kind of food, like whatever kind of food that you can. First is dry food, then there's vegetables, raw vegetables, boiled vegetables, non-veg, boiled, as well as steamed. And then again, you can, you should also try to feed your puppy, uh, you know, fruits as well, because some fruits are really good for the, uh, try to feed, um, you know, leafy vegetables. So again, give him an exposure to all type of food and make sure that you are roughly changing 20% of the diet with something else every three, four days in the first six months. Okay. So let's say, uh, you know, if you are st if starting to give chicken, in that case, you can, let's say every week you can ch change the nature of the protein, preferably to, let's say, from chicken to quail, from quail to lamb, or from lamb to pork, and things like that. So that would be much more helpful in get, you know, getting your dog's stomach, get used to the different textures of food, so that in the longer scheme of things, in the longer run, your dog does not show much fussiness, okay? 
and again try to keep a good amount of gap between two consecutive meals because that would make sure that your dog has ample amount of drive towards food and has a healthy respect towards food okay and uh, besides this you can literally feed your dog uh again try to avoid for since it's a labrador right oh, okay so you have not mentioned which breed it is so again a three to six months old puppy needs a lot of protein a lot of uh, calcium rich diet okay and uh, lots of different texture food items again multivitamins can easily be you can get it from vegetables and fruits try to inculcate that habit from a very early age fit everything fit every type of thing whatever type of things you can in fact i would say make it a point to introduce one new food that is a different type of texture uh, every day just one food anything something different to the existing meal so that will make sure that your puppy starts to like and has a healthy respect for food in general So the next question is from Nalina, Nalina Yeshodha. How important is the age of the dog training? Fifter is important for. So the second, the next question, I mean, the second part of the question is not very clear. And uh, so let me try to answer the first question from whatever I can comprehend. See when it comes to training a puppy it they are pretty much impressionable like a very young child so they are much of a pretty much impressionable age you can train them easily there's not much behavioral issues or bad habits that needs undoing but as the age increases let's say as the dog as a puppy reaches the age of six months one year two year three year four year and so on so what happens is that by that time there's a lot of good habits and bad habits that have developed in all those years and now depending upon the, the what are the kind of bad habits that your puppy has the, the dog has learned over those years and since how long has it been persisting or has it been part of his memory okay so now that would determine how long it is going to take to break through like out of those habits sometimes it is faster sometimes it is slower like very very slow <clears throat> but then again having said that you can literally train your dog at any age next question is from sunny singh my dog golden retriever female age 12 months but any other person biting tendency please help okay so again it's a bit confusing as to what the question actually means here uh, guys please try to you know post the questions in a bit more readable format so that it's easier for me to answer it so again if your dog is a uh, golden retriever who is a female age 12 months of age and uh, if we i think if she sees any other person again if it's a case where your dog uh, charges or bites other people who approach her then it's a high time that you reach out to a professional because that particular trait or behavior is totally completely non retriever like okay and which means your dog is pretty much frustrated as well as understimulated in terms of emotional physical and mental uh, you know aspects please try to reach out with a bit more details so that I can help you. Here's the next question by Anusuya. I have senior dogs. 
both are nine years old. My lab's legs were not in a good shape, but he is able to climb the stairs at a slow pace. I live on the third floor and he likes to sleep only in my room. Hence, climbing is unavoidable. What do you recommend? Is it fine for him to climb stairs at this age? He is on Himalaya joint tablets. Eats veggies like bottle guard, sweet potatoes, carrots with rice on weekdays. Beef, organ, bones and meat once a week with rice. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, and meet once a week with rice. So again, and there's multiple questions in this one. So let me try to first address this particular senior dog's concern. Okay, so if you're concerned that uh, yes, it is going to affect the joints quite a bit because the dog is already nine years old. And even though you, your dog has a good healthy appetite and is also on joint support, but it's important that your dog does not climb the stairs. So now you might ask you what can be done? One thing that one practical solution that comes to my mind is using access gates. So maybe you can order some baby access gates from Amazon. Okay. Or maybe you can simply get in touch with a local welder and install an access gate on the staircase stairs so that way you'll be able to discourage him yeah first couple of days he might make a huge ruckus but then again since you are trying to not do it for the sake of his welfare it's important that you make you no know, get certain access get installed at the bottom of the stairs so that should help you. So next question that you had asked, my Indian dog Kumbai breed has frequent stomach issues. Let me know how do you take care of senior dogs and how to cope in case they pass away. Okay. Uh, The first question is, I mean, the second question is the uh, frequent stomach issues. So first thing that you need to uh, check it out is why is your dog having so much of stomach issues? Uh, first is deworming schedule. Is your dog being correctly dewormed? That's the first question. Second question is what is the current status of your dog's internal organs, which includes the liver? the pancreas, the kidney, okay? And get it checked out, Check get get the you know, pathology reports checked by your vet. The test that you're looking at is kidney function test, liver function test, um, MLA's lab is, uh, no, no, not appendix lab, it's a KFT, LFT, CBC. CBC is the complete blood count. And uh, preferably T4, just for just to check it once because it may so happen that these dogs sometimes do suffer from thyroid related issues so that is one thing that you want to just check it at once so if the blood reports are stable and good to go then i would say uh, try to avoid um curd with your combi okay and uh, since Kumbai is a very, uh, you know, small, short coat breed, and also Kumbai is pretty native to the South Indian climate. And uh, again, I don't know what your dog's diet is for your Kumbai. So if you're feeding him beef as well, try to moderate it in his case, okay? 
and if the blood reports come up good then maybe you can just go for another test lastly which is the food allergy test so, so when you get your food allergy test for a dog done that makes sure that you have complete like full comprehensive list of foods that you need to avoid for him as well as the foods that he can tolerate well okay so that might cost a little bit but then again it will give you a clear picture what your dog's internal health is so once it is done and good to go then you can you know moderate and modulate the food accordingly also uh, how to take care of senior dogs very good question it is not a question that i typically or very commonly get but again it's a very important very nice question first is you keep them hydrated no matter what no matter what you make it a priority that your dog stays hydrated okay if your dog is not having it it's important that you get, get your dog some sort of exercise especially the senior dogs and the exercises that are not heavy on the joints so try to avoid playing fetch okay or try to avoid going out for a job so instead what you can do is uh, you know take him out for a swim in the local pond or a swimming pool wherever it is wherever if you have access to that and uh, secondly what you can also do is uh, you can use the food to hide it across the house and make your make your dog sniff and find it and have it so again that is very lighter on the joints but it is getting your dog the required uh, exercise first and it's getting giving your dog uh, mental stimulation and your dog is satisfied as well as your dog has will be getting a good um, digestion so that is one thing and try to make sure that every uh, four to six months you are getting a comprehensive blood test done that will make sure that you are constantly updated with the continuous development of what's going on inside the body because outdoor so i mean um, outside symptoms you can easily address any doctor can simply take a look and check it out what's up but then again if it when it comes to internal issues it is usually not detectable from outside that's one thing that you need to keep in top priority but again make sure that your dog gets a good amount of uh, must body massage after any type of workout especially if it's uh, let's say swimming or things like that and a good body massage once or twice a week and your dog also is uh, fed a good amount of vegetables and also some supplements like vitamin 4 vitamin uh, a and vitamin e because at from this age onwards there's a higher chance that the uh, no, the eyes are going to be affected. So make sure that you get your dog's eyes checked every six months as well as uh, try to feed food that is rich in vitamin A, as preferably carrot and things like that. I hope that was helpful to you. And uh, the last question that you had posed was how to cope in case they pass away so this is a bit of a controversial question but uh, since i've recently lost one of my older dogs on the first of january um, midnight all i can say is that you know there's no fixed way of coping up with the loss of a pet everybody has their own uh you know way to deal with it some people are very vocal about it some people try to you know avoid experiencing that pain by getting another puppy or another dog or maybe parting uh, things like that i've even seen one of my colleagues uh you know going out to a pub and uh grabbing a you know, mug of beer and enjoying with his friends just to deal with that you know um just to deal with that and just to celebrate the life of the pet that he just lost in the morning so again it might seem like a bit more controversial but you know i think everybody has their own coping mechanism that's the first thing to understand and uh, personally for me i i i did not speak to anybody on the first day uh, because i'm a person who typically is very vocal and very talkative in general 
but then again i tried i absolutely avoided speaking to anybody and uh, because for me it was more about a time to reflect upon the uh, you know time that i have spent with my best friend for the last 13 years and also the good moments the incredibly funny moments that our families have experienced uh, the families have got had gotten used to so it was time for him to reflect back on the, all those memories and uh, again there are going to be people people who are going to be you know sharing their condolences with you through social media and things like that so i did not much found i don't much find much solace in that so what i did was instead i switched off my uh, facebook i kept away from whatsapp in general for the first two to three days because i just was not in a mood to engage in any sort of work and if you're a working professional it's totally fine to ask for a leave and not even turning up at the office if you don't feel like working that's totally fine to take a day off or a week off depending on what you feel about it uh, everybody has their own coping mechanism again at the end of the day there's no fixed way to cope or grieve with a pet who has passed away and if at some point if you feel like if you're not able to deal with it you know by yourself even with the help of your family or friends it's a good idea to consult or get in touch with a professional counselor who can help you maybe you know who can hear you out patiently and very honestly nobody can help you in this process but just talking to people and going through the good memories it does help a lot so this is a question from pala or pala i'm sorry i don't know if i correct spelled it right so uh, he has posted potty training and barking. So Pala, please reach out to me for uh, adding your email ID to the potty toilet guide, potty toilet training guide. Uh, there's a whole access to a hell lot of uh, resources for that. And I've also mentioned that dog barks a lot. Well, dog dogs bark because they are trying to communicate a certain need that are being unmet. It's not being met so try to figure out try to find out what the reason is you can share it with me you can post it in the questions and i'll try to fill that <clears throat> okay so this is question i don't know who posted it Hi Shaptadeep, hope you are doing well. Yes, I am. Thank you. My question is, hope you remember, I have already shared my question on our WhatsApp channel. Okay. My laboratory is five years old now. One and a half years ago, he was nabbed from home while he was on his morning walk. Yes, yes, I remember now. Recently, I found him back. Yes. Uh, he never used to go out without permission okay after he's come back he always wants to go out and sometimes he is going out without permission when someone is not watching out how to tackle this so again you know we can train a dog uh, for the things that we don't want or what the things that we're looking to train for if you are there we cannot train a dog for things where you might not be present so in this case uh, since you've mentioned that sometimes he goes out of the house without permission when someone is not watching so in this case i would strongly suggest crate training him okay and uh, and take him out every three four hours when you are available to take him out for uh, pee and potty breaks for play for pers spending his personal time for grooming, for feeding, for training, and things like that. When it's done, just you can put, simply put him back into the crate. Because since uh, such an, you know, uh, such a 
unfortunate event has happened in the past it's very obvious that you're constantly on the edge and frankly speaking this is not even fair on the family as well as on the dog so the best way ahead would be to go ahead and get a crate and since it's a labrador try to get a 42 inches crate which is three and a half feet size crate okay try to try and get that so it, you can find it online or amazon or even local vendors as local pet shop followers as well so crate train him give him a good bedding for the winter in the summer he might not like it so he might throw it out or try to tear it off so it's summers take away the bedding when it's winters get the bedding inside the crate and also keep him inside whenever you guys are busy with something else and try and make it a point to again take him out every three four hours and to give him some sort of uh, mental stimulation or physical stimulation or for his pee and poop breaks or feeding time and things like that okay i hope that uh, answers your question let's move on to the next question so this is a question by rupesh how to train dog for guarding most of the people it is allowing to touch when they come home and not parking <clears throat> okay so rupesh as i have uh, gone through the question i understand that you are basically looking for not looking for a guard dog or you are not even looking for a guard dog training what you're looking for is your dog to alert to people okay so first things first when you're complaining that most of the people your dog is allowing to touch when they come home my question is what exactly are you doing at that point of time why are you allowing people to come to your place and then you know pet him and things like that is it really necessary because on one hand you are expecting too much too much of from your dog you are expecting that your dog should alert to, to you that somebody has come on the other hand you're taking away that natural suspicious nature by allowing every random person or every friend's family related to come home and touch and pet your dog you are absolutely doing two contradictory things your expectations versus your reality is very different so first things first get in touch with a good trainer locally who can help you with this and second thing is stop letting people come to your place and touch and you know um get super friendly with your dog dogs were never meant to or ideally most dog breeds were never meant to greet and you know get friendly with visitors except golden retrievers or labradors for that matter just a handful of three four breeds that would bred to be friendly and greet people but if a dog is doing that it's a it's high time that you take a strong and hard look at yourself and please do not take it personally I just you know questioned in a way because on one hand you are expecting too much from the dog on the other hand you are letting things happen which are within your control so try to address that there's a question by Vamsi Thar Vamsi okay golden retriever aged 2.6 years is not at all friendly with other pets are you here in the room Vamsi please raise your hand once I think you are here yes yes give me a second let me unmute you yes Vamsi you can speak
please unmute yourself Hello. Yes, Hello. Yes. 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 Tell me. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a golden retro two and a half years male. Uh, okay. And uh, I think it was there with you for a few days in Kolkata through one of my friend we kept in boarding. Uh, pet name is Archie. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, I do remember him. You. Yes, yes, yes. How are you? He has turned into notorious. Now he's doing good. But only thing is, he is very. a uh, jealous i can say or uh, he is territorial or commanding he doesn't allow any other pet to come near him within apartment there are around 8 to 10 pets here he, he is totally unfriendly he doesn't he becomes aggressive by looking at the even when i am traveling in car if suppose a nearby any stray dog comes nearby also he will be very aggressive at them okay so with e collar only i am able to manage him without e collar it is becoming very difficult otherwise he is very cool rest all things he is very cool with Fair. female dogs he will be okay mm. with any male whether it is a puppy or it is a very big dog he doesn't care he doesn't allow them any time close to him okay so first thing is um There's a couple of questions. So why? So have you got like work from home or work from office right now? As of now, it is work from home. But very soon, it might be work from office. Work from home. So from since when has this issue like crop, you know, cropped up? This issue was there from long back. Even when you met him that time, also it was there. Mm hmm. In between with the e collar, it got reduced a bit. Mm. but i am trying to get rid of the e collar he is turning back into his uh, back old ways okay which so which means that he has become collar smart okay so there are dogs who who can simply figure out that you know what tool is being used and they just simply find a way to navigate around it okay and uh, which also means that uh, in the first place the entire training and the relationship was not built properly okay and because e collar only helps to either enhance or decrease what is there so basically if it's if it's some if it's a bad uh, habit or if it's a bad uh, you know uh, behavior that we are trying to address we have to address it with the proper strong foundation work and then layer it up with e collar work okay and if it's a good habits that we are trying to you know amplify then in that case you have to make sure that we have spent good amount of time solidifying the foundation before layering it up with equal again so now when you're saying that he has become a very uh, you know uh, this like this what i would suggest is that you know you build up on the relationship you use the food as uh, the for engagement purpose because you build up the engagement stronger engagement first second is uh, you start working him um, in a zero zero distraction environment and then gradually take him outdoors okay and the third is uh, pay very specific attention to this there are times when he whines or barks or you know uh, engages in a attention seeking behavior do you answer to it negatively or positively he he once he look gets the uh, once he sees other pet he immediately starts growl no i'm talking about let's say when he is uh, living in the house okay in the living. house yeah he um, pamper is he is, is he demanding when it comes to more affection and attention ha uh, a bit i sure it's a bit it could be more i can say uh, he is pampered a bit more with toys with yeah so first thing is to understand one thing the uh, 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 underlying core area core issue apart from the many other contributing factors but one predominant factor is 
uh, his whining, his nudging, his barking is readily being answered. Okay. The second thing is, uh, does he constantly follow one person? Let's say you or your wife from one room to the another constantly. Whenever, let's say, if let's say if in the middle of the night you get up and you have to fetch a glass of water, or let's say you have to go to the washroom, does he follow you right away? Yes. He, the, he, he, even if I go to washroom, also he will sit next to the door till I come out. Correct. So as you can see, that your dog is constantly, you know, guarding your immediate personal space. So in a way, he is. Uh, you have conditioned him to constantly be there and guard your immediate area. Now. What's happening is that it's translated into a very hyper vigilant behavior when you're going outdoors. You're always constantly scanning, you, okay, wh whom do I next guard, guard my owners against? Guard my people against? Because for him, it's a game on. It's a very stressful situation for him. And somehow you have, you know, at some point you might have found it cute or might have, you know, in, enhanced it or never checked it. So it may so happen that you might not have reinforced this behavior, but it is it, it's also happened that it you no know, this particular behavior has inadvertently popped up and you've never tried to correct it and now before we go ahead and try to talk say okay e -collars help hota hai, barabar hai. but then again the thing is that you have, you have to put in that uh, strong compliance in your dog and that also includes a no verbal no it should hold a stronger meaning yes, that, then we can then you can layer it up layer it up with the e -collar. Getting it. So at that, then that point of time, even without equal also, you are going to get the result. So what it, what I was thought by for using equal is before uh, using it, you need to say a very loud no, then use the caller, so that subsequently on uh, frequent usages, next onwards, when you say no itself, you should stop, so that there is no need for. Yeah, you I understand that, but, you know, but but try to understand this thing that you know dogs are not dumb. Okay, why I'm saying this? Because at the end of the day, yes, you have you know, conditioned the dog to uh, to a no. You have conditioned the no with a negative stimulus, but with an e-collar. But wh whereas it should have been ideal, it should have been done with the leash only. Collar and leash, plain and simple. Then okay. once the groundwork was established very well, very strongly in a zero distraction environment as well as high distraction, then you should have... No, layer it up with e-collar and then you would have got a much more long lasting results with or without e-collar. So the thing is that we cannot put in a foundation of work with e-collar. We have to put in a foundation with the prop, simple food, collar and leash and play. As well as simple, you know, you just have to establish the no, a stronger no with simple leash, collar and leash. If it's not there, if it's missing, then we are going to face challenges. I mean, no, at some point of time, it must have happened that, you know, skip the basic parts and do that to move to the advanced part. So equal is primary to, it acts as a, of, you know, uh, invisible collar and leash. But then again, in order for that to, you know, in order, in, at the core of the things, in order for your dog to stay in tune with your, uh, you know, expectations, what you are expecting, what you are looking for. You have to put in that work, the base work, with a plain and simple collar and leash. Once it is good to go, then we pair it up with e collar. Then you would not face any problem. Okay. Right now, your dog has already figured out. Okay, the moment the collar is on, he says no. But there is nothing else that that comes after it, because that foundation itself was put on with the e collar. That's why he's acting smart. It's none of his uh, fault. Okay. Getting it. So just do one thing. Just reach, just uh, message me later on. Uh, I, will, I, will, I can help you with this. I can help you with this because we have a program and I can help you with that. And we can reset the entire thing from scratch. Okay. Thank but you. then it is very much doable. But as I mentioned, the key, this is primarily stemming from the fact that he's got a super um, defensive and protective around your immediate personal space. Like right away, this is me and this is my personal space like let's say one or two hands around me this is my personal space personal bubble and whereas he's constant he's not even leaving you alone throughout the day even when you're at home so he okay. finds more solace in protecting your space than just being you know emotionally happy by himself 
So he is not a dog who has learned to self-regulate his emotions when he is left alone or when he is put in a bit of uncomfortable situation. Getting it. So again, I am assuming that the rest of the obedience is clear, but then again, you have to work on resetting the relationship from scratch. It will take a couple of weeks. You will need supervision, but this is doable. This is this can be totally reset and put in a proper frame. Okay, I'll get in touch with you. Yeah. So let's move on to the last question. So question by Saroj Jan. My dog is having heavy hair fall and she is losing weight. Well, Saroj, uh, first things first, please get a complete uh, blood test done and get in touch with your vet because not is not no your dog is not only experiencing heavy hair fall, but your dog is also losing weight, so which is not normal. So you must get in touch with your vet and figure out what's happening. And also, no matter what your vet says, try to get a complete work blood work done. It's going to be super critical. And that would also explain why she might be uh, losing weight. Because if a dog is sick, if a dog is not healthy, if a dog's internal uh, parameters are not stable, these things happen. All right, guys. So any more questions from your end? Okay, guys, so then we'll just wind up today's session. And if you have any more questions to answer, that means answering, just reach out. All right. And take care. Thank you. Bye bye.